All right, guys, it is that time of the weekend to talk about AMC stock, go over the data that you guys need to know. Specifically, I want to take a deep look into the technicals because look at this chart. Just take a gander. You are at a very critical key level on a technical basis, and this could spark either a major rally or a major drop. And I personally tend to think we're going to see a rally. Now, do not be confused. The markets right now care about what the Fed is going to do, they care about a recession, but most importantly, they care about company earnings. And we will start to get some very large companies that do report earnings this week. And we'll have to see how that potentially feeds into the probability of a 1% rate hike or not. So we have a lot to get into here in this video. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys are new here, my name is The Creative Investor. If you have not hit that like button or subscribe to the channel, what are you waiting for? It is free 99. Thank you guys for doing that. Let's get straight into it. So a brief recap of what happened last week in the markets and what happened with AMC last week in the markets is simply boiled down to bank earnings, Fed speakers, as well as this 1% rate hike. We seen the probability of a 1% rate hike go from 10% to 80% literally in one day. This is because CPI came out and it was 9.1%. Shortly after that, Fed speakers came out and said, yeah, we don't really think we need to do a 1% rate hike. Fed Waller specifically rebuttaled that and, and and that's basically what he projected out to the markets and the probability of a one percent rate hike now only sits at 29.1 percent fed bullard he also says it doesn't make too much difference to do 100 basis points or 75 basis points at the july meeting fed bullard also said and this is what i find very interesting he said that he pays very close attention to the yield curve and we'll get this specific quote he says i take yield curve inversion seriously as a signal and if you guys are unaware of this the yield curve is inverted by 20 basis points which is essentially saying investors they're selling the two-year bonds they're buying the 10-year bonds when investors sell the two-year bonds or shorter duration maturities it means they expect rates to be higher and they expect uh, the fed to make a mistake and end up cutting rates over the long term essentially when investors sell bonds it drives the yield up drives a, in, in, in this case the two-year yield and when investors buy the 10-year bond it drives down the 10-year yield. That's where you can get a two-year bond that pays you out more than a 10-year bond because people, long story short, see more risk over the next two years. So that's pretty big. And I think the Fed kind of, in a weird way, we're going to make a whole video on this, but I think in a weird way, the Fed kind of uh, started to roll over on us. What I mean by that is, is they're starting to get to the point where we could see a U-turn pretty shortly, or at least the Fed slowing down raising rates, which could be very bullish for the stock market. But by and large, what happened last week was that Fed speakers' probability of a 1% rate hike went from nothing to, yeah, we're getting a 1% rate hike, now down to, yeah, we're not getting a 1% rate hike again. Also, bank earnings were very bad across the board. Profits down in between 20 and 50%, depending what bank you are looking at. But banks did see a pretty nice rally on Friday. So, a little bit of a mixed bag there. And I think it kind of shows you just how beat down a lot of stocks are. Even if you have terrible earnings, the, the banks still rallied on Friday. So, I think that's pretty indicative of where this market is currently at and how important earnings are going to be for this upcoming week. As far as AMC stock is concerned, AMC rallied 6%, GameStop did rally 10%, and now AMC is sitting in a very interesting predicament right here. We're, we'll talk about this after we go through the data and kind of summarize everything looking at the charts, trying to predict, trying to see ahead what could potentially happen. And just key point, key note to point out while we go over all of these other things, 
I am bullish on AMC for this upcoming week. Now let's talk about this upcoming week. Talk about any economic data that we might have because we really don't have a, a lot. You have on Monday some three and six month bond auctions, net long term TIC flows for May, foreign bond investments, overall net capital flows. I'm interested to see what some of these data points are just because they involve you know foreign bond investment, overall net capital flows that's involving hedge funds involving uh capital markets it won't move the stock market but i'm very interested to see how it is actually looking uh as, as far as inflows and outflows now the housing starts for june and building permits for june comes out at 8 30 in the morning some real estate data do not be confused if the markets react negatively or positively on tuesday based off of these data points because after all, you cannot forget the housing sector is the most important sector. It is the sector of all sectors. No matter who you are, you need a place to live. So depending what happens with real estate, obviously, if the price of real estate comes down, should be good for inflation. Owners equivalent uh, of rents that, that should go down, which is... Uh, a part of the CPI, they calculate rents really strange in uh, the CPI report, but that should be good for CPI. And it's ultimately what the Fed wants is to slow down the real estate market. And they're obviously doing that. So if we get more reassurance from that, it could show, hey, the Fed is doing their job and we don't have a, too much to worry about. Now, as far as on Wednesday, you have Canada's inflation rate year over year. A lot of people don't know this, but Canada did just raise rates for by one percent they have not done that in a very long time so i think that could be very important and they are our closest uh literal country but our trading partner as well i live in michigan canada shout out to you guys you guys are just a jump skip and a hop away over the pond now uh, at 10 a.m., you have existing home sales for June. Also will be important for real estate. Anyone that is looking to uh, get their hands on some real estate, you should definitely pay very close attention to this data. Not sure how much it'll actually move the markets on Wednesday. I think you could get a bigger reaction uh, off Tuesday's data, but still will be important. Initial jobless claims, that comes out 8.30 in the morning on Thursday and I think that could be the biggest catalyst overall is those initial jobless claims Philadelphia Fed manufacturing index a lot of Philly Fed uh, data Philly Fed employment Philly Fed new orders Philly Fed prices paid uh, so that that will be key uh, and then on Friday, um, I don't really think you have anything. S&P Global Manufacturing PMI. So you guys can see we don't have anything too crazy. Um, and even let's go out to um, oh, we can't we can't go out just the week after that. So that that is unfortunate. But you will have more data coming out in this next upcoming week not this week but the week after that you will get the fed rate decision on july 27th that is one week four days one hour and 18 minutes away we are expecting a 75 basis point rate hike if the fed comes out and they say hey guys yeah we're seeing the economic data is is not really doing so good we're going to raise rates by 75 basis points we're going to get that federal funds rate up to 2.25 to two and a half percent and then we're going to start raising rates much slower i think that could be very very bullish and i think the fed comments that we've seen really solidified that in my personal opinion or not really solidified that. I think that's the wrong words. Um, but it did show the first sign of the Fed potentially rolling over. And Fed Bullard right here, I, th I think that sums it up. It doesn't make too much difference to do 100 basis points or 75 basis points at the July meeting. And the quote about yield curve inversion. Fed Daly also says we are beginning to see inflation coming down. Fed Daly says I don't have recession high on list of possible outcomes and obviously they see the data coming in they see you know bad data which on friday we did get one percent retail sales which is quite contrary um to some of the bad data that we have been getting so that obviously uh lends some credibility to uh, potentially avoiding a recession there there's there's somewhat an argument for that if the price of oil does roll over pretty quickly and does not make its way back up so that's basically what we have in store for this upcoming week that is what happened last week i can also not forget to point this out 
that the University of Michigan five-year inflation expectations at their lowest point in a year. I believe it was 5.2% was the inflation expectation. So you're definitely seeing that. You're not seeing inflation becoming unanchored, and that's the last thing the Fed wants. Just more reassurance that the Fed might give us some clues, might give us some guidance what to expect for that September meeting. A lot of people were saying... Um, it, it, and I, th I believe even Fed speakers were talking about slowing down in September, and that's going to obviously be around the midterms. Um, so we could get a big rate hike this time and then uh, some clues uh, as to what could happen in September. And really, you do not want to be out of this market. Let's just let's just say it like that. You've seen so much pain. You've seen so much bad news, so much bad data. Like 2022 has to be a record for just shit, like bad shit, bad data, bad Fed speakers, just, just bad everything. Like there's there's really nothing you can point to. Like that was very bullish. That was good. That was a good thing. 2022 has not had that. And we've gotten rates up quite substantially. I mean, 2.25 to two and a half percent i think the fed might start to slow down by september and we might get some clues to that at this july 27th meeting so you know it could honestly go either way here uh the fed could double down or they could pause a little bit and uh you know definitely the fed pausing would be seen as a uh, very very bullish thing now as far as amc and what the data is actually doing and wait before we get into that we will talk about the earnings for this upcoming week so on monday bank of america reports uh pre-market goldman sachs charles schwab those are pre-market those are going to be the biggest ones ibm is monday after close before market pre-market tuesday is johnson and johnson holly burton uh silvergate alley hasbros uh that's pretty much it N netflix and in after hours interactive brokers uh, pretty much it as far as what's going to move the markets there. Wednesday, after hours, you have Tesla, you have Alcoa, you have Discover, uh, Kinder Morgan. On Thursday, pre-market, you have AT&T, American Airlines, Nokia, uh, Domino's, Philip Morris uh, International. Thursday, excuse me, Thursday, after hours, you do have Snap. Uh, definitely one of my larger holdings, Snapchat. Uh, that's going to be the biggest one. Mattel, Capital One, Beer, uh, Boston Beer, too. A couple, you know, there's going to be more earnings, but these are the biggest, most anticipated earnings. And then Friday, you have Verizon, Cliffs, American Express, Twitter. Twitter, that one could be big. Next Era Energy as well. So I think the earnings are really going to dominate headlines. And let's just get this clear. No matter what happens... In the economy, no matter what happens with a recession, what happens with the Fed raising rates, as long as earnings are good, uh, you don't have to see stocks go down, right? Uh, if, if earnings just do really well, then stocks don't have to fall based off what the Fed is doing, based off of a potential recession. That's, that's just the case. So I think earnings are going to be more important than all of that stuff combined because if earnings fall, Let's say earnings are bad, which I think they're going to be pretty bad across the board. Well, that's where you could see some real downside because the question then is how bad are earnings going to get? Where should our earnings estimates be? Believe it or not, throughout 2022, if you pull up the daily candlestick chart for the S&P 500, this has happened and earnings are still at record highs. Analysts still expect record profits, record revenue, record pretty much everything. They've, they haven't brought down their estimates like at all. So imagine what could happen if earnings are bad. Just food for thought, something to keep in mind. Now, as far as AMC and the actual Ortex data, short interest of free float. Let's go ahead and refresh this page. It's sitting at 17.95%, $1.39 billion worth of shorts on AMC stock currently. Free flow out on loan, 25.34%. Shares out on loan, 130.61 million. Days to cover, 3.2. Cost to borrow, 11.6. 100% share utilization. Cost to borrow max of 15.16%. Cost to borrow average of 10.8%. Cost to borrow minimum of 8.93%. So the data here, I mean, take it with a big grain of salt, but you still uh, see some encouraging signs. Even more encouraging signs is actually in the 
options market. You are seeing some very large option activity, uh, specifically some single orders that are very large. One of these coming in the last couple of minutes of trading, you only had about seven minutes of trading left where traders did purchase September 16th, $15 calls worth about $140,000. Same story here, 16 minutes left of the trading day yesterday. Uh, August 19th expiration, $13 calls worth about $130,000. And overall on Friday, 16 orders totaling $1.04 million, positive order value of 68%. So very bullish across the board really over the last week it's been pretty bullish and i think these numbers are, are kind of botched here it says 112 orders totaling 14.9 million dollars positive order value of 47 percent we've really seen a lot of very strong bullish days as far as option activity and i think that is what did help us uh take a six percent move to the upside uh last week so you know when we boil it down and we look at really why AMC did not rally harder last week. I I I think it it was a mix of factors, right? AMC did not have a clear cut catalyst. GameStop had a, a more you know more so catalyst than even AMC, and we really didn't feed off of each other in the same way. Specifically on Friday, you didn't see enough calls actually go into the money you can see 67,000 calls that were in the money this is actually lower than where the peak was at you did see people buying more options a lot of people were yoloing on options but they were not buying the close to the money options i explained this a little bit in the last video but when you're thinking about options and thinking about buy orders that go into amc or go into any stock what actually moves up the price of amc or or any stock for that matter is how fast do people want to get into positions if option orders start to come in for let's say the 15 dollars strike uh and, and and it's a friday or a wednesday whatever day it is and you're paying let's say 25 dollars for that option well there's there's a pretty close break even and if you start to hammer hammer the bid and drive up the price you start to get this chain reaction well it's not about how many sellers or or really buyers you have on any given day i, I specifically said this in one of the last videos if you had 70 percent of orders that were buys for amc on a day 30 percent that were sells you could still see the price of the stock fall because it's all about how fast do people want to get into positions it's about the bid and the ask if if people are just hammering the bid there's good news whatever happens people want to get into positions quickly they're willing to pay more and more and more than the last guy well the price of the stock will go up and up and up and up if you're you're not really trying to get into a position quickly if people are just nonchalantly buying the stock doesn't mean the stock has to go up even if you see a very large skew to buys rather than sells it's all about remember this the velocity of positioning how fast do people want to get into bullish or bearish positions and that you could really boil that down to momentum but it's more specific than momentum so hopefully that makes some sense and i think that is partly why amc did not go through a parabolic rally uh last week when we did have over half a million calls that were still out of the money by expiration now as far as next week seventeen thousand calls that are currently in the money fifty six thousand calls that are out of the money and about 4200 puts that are currently in the money now if you take a look at the actual technical analysis i think this is one of the most exciting things that we've seen in a very long time because why we've we found resistance at the 100 day moving average one two three four days now but we have also held support for four days at the $15 level. Well, the 100 day moving average is at $15.59 per share. We're currently at $15.37 per share. We're in a very tight range, only, you know, about 50 cents. So we're going to make a big break, in my opinion, to the upside, right? But it could also be to the downside. These, these levels, right, once you break out above that, it's going to really send the stock much, 
much higher or potentially much lower a lot of that will be based off of trading algos as well as other hedge funds and the way that you've seen positioning into the last couple of minutes of trading on friday with the options i do think that is a pretty clear sign that we could see some very bullish uh, activity over this next coming week also volume has been pretty low even on friday 26 million shares traded hands but the stock did go up about 2.06 percent so that is also a great sign and even take a look back here at, at what happened in march i pointed this out a couple of times but you're finding resistance three days around the 20 dollar level whereas you are holding support above where you had previously broke out which was the re the resistance level previously and this was the 50 day moving average you you held support there found resistance 20 dollar level and then you ultimately did make a big break to the upside i think that's very well possible what could happen with amc stock just an overall very bullish trend line if if you if you were to imagine one um i doubt i highly doubt that we're going to make a big break to the downside unless earnings are really bad and people start to get super fearful and the valuations start to to you know get thrown everywhere people are pretty confident how to value stocks right now and people are pretty confident stocks are not worth a whole lot right now which we know will change and this is why this is one of the best buying opportunities that you guys will ever see in your whole lifetime uh but earnings will be very very important like it says over here on cnbc it says earnings could be an even bigger catalyst for stocks after the market's wild ride on rate fears so that's pretty much going to be all for this video uh unless we get some kind of specific catalyst for amc we know we're not going to get earnings until august 4th that is when i would expect to see a bigger move to the upside but if we can get above this 100 day moving average if we can break out we can hold support there then i do think next stop would be in the 20 30 dollar range upon uh potentially august 4th or any new big catalyst so that is going to be all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you guys have not already. If you guys want to come trade with me live in real time, we had some fire monster trades last week. Definitely check that out. Pays for itself. Link down below in the description. You guys enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will see you in the next.